Uh, oh, I forgot that there's like an introduction, introduction thing. Uh, where's that sound clip? That's a W. That's E1. That's E1. That's a W. How many people want to eat a W tonight? Yeah. How many eat a W tonight? Yeah. Come, hey, come here. That's man. all I want. That's Hello, you're listening to NFL Pillow Talk. I was really hoping that you would forget and play, or and say uh, Total Yardage again. <laughs> I was very, very close. I was thinking about it for like a solid three or four minutes, or three or four seconds as we were running up to the end of that. I was like, oh God, what's the name of our new podcast? I've, I've forgotten everything. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so. I've opened like five soundboards. Oh no. Well, that's gonna be interesting. Okay. Uh, get rid of all of this. Okay. So now we're gonna talk about football. I guess. Did you watch any of the preseason games? So here's the thing about preseason. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I feel morally obligated. To look up the day after the game what happened uh-huh. you'll no love for watching the preseason yeah the preseason uh, sucks I, I feel like the preseason like like i actually do believe that the preseason is necessary based on the current collective bargaining agreement the fact that players can't like practice in pads mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff i feel like we have to have a four game preseason to get players ready Right. Um, I don't think we should go down to like two and all of that kind of nonsense. But on the same token, like the NFL needs to stop trying to make the preseason anything other than just like the Horrible. regular season's like like shitty cousin. Like like it is terrible. It's it okay. The product on the field is always bad, and like yes. that's inherent. But it's just like. I I blame like the like the TV agreements for yes. like the and the NFL for just like trying to milk as much money out of this as possible and the teams for like yeah. you know charging in some places like charging full price for like these tickets to these awful games. Yeah, I I think I honestly I need to look it up. The last time I checked, I think the Packers charged like thirty dollars for a preseason game. Yeah, when I when I went to the low like that. When I went to the Pats game, I uh, like a Pats preseason game, I paid like a hundred and twenty, but I had like fifty yard line, like like lower deck seats. So like I had great seats. Yeah. Um Yeah. And that was like like I I was looking up other tickets on the day of the game and there were like cheap seats that were like eighteen bucks or something like that. So yeah, the Patriots yeah. don't charge a lot, but I was, uh, I heard that the Redskins were charging like basically full price tickets, and I'm like, that's not surprising. What? The Redskins can't do anything that's not shitty. Oh, so, man. you know, my thing, my thing about the preseason really like, like it sucks. It sucks. Hey, Jack, but, but preseason sucks. <laughs> I hate it. I don't want to watch it. I think it's dumb. I don't hey, watch it. Um, you know, Hello. For teams. Real quickly, for teams like the Pats and the Packers, though, I respect the preseason because it's a chance for second, third, and fourth stringers to, like, make a case for themselves. Mm-hmm. And then you have teams like, you know, then you have teams like the Browns where, you know, Baker Mayfield is starting his second season. So, of course, they want to, like, really give him an opportunity to play. And then I feel like you have teams like, um, <laughs> like, looking at it right now, like, the New York Giants are 2-0 and oh in the preseason, and I feel like they're just getting Giants fans hopes up. Like, yeah, I'd like to I'd always like to remind everybody that the year the Browns went 0 and 16, they also went 4 and 0 in the preseason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Didn't they make shirts for that? Their <laughs> preseason like preseason. I think yeah. so. And that's great. I think so. But yeah, I just I don't know, like I think that the the preseason like I said, the preseason, I 100% believe that it is absolutely necessary in the current collective bargaining agreement because players can't practice with pads. That being said, I hate watching preseason. Yeah. No, it's definitely good for for them to get the... It's like training, really. So it's yeah. not interesting, though. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it's interesting this song. I don't know. Yeah. Do you like, like it, Jake? 
Uh, no, I don't. Okay, we all don't like it. Very good. I don't think I anybody like likes the preseason. I think yeah, like just watch it. I mean, even as even like me, somebody who like watches film and like tries to study film to some extent, I hate it because it's just like you can't even learn a lot about players because they're going like, yeah, sure. This, you know, roster bubble, you know, wide receiver looks like he's the greatest thing ever to play football but he's also going up against a third string defense that's playing the most vanilla zone coverage you can imagine so it's like yeah. i'm not learning anything i'm just seeing that like yeah if this guy were to play against the most uninspired defense in the entire world he'd be really good but that's true for every single player in the nfl they'd be good against an uninspired vanilla defense yeah would you rather watch the preseason or pro madden players play against each other oh fuck that's really that's a really <laughs> good question that's what bewilders me is pro um i guess pro teams for sports games mm-hmm. um like i play i've been playing 2k and they'll have they have their own little vlog thing before the game starts you mm-hmm. can choose to listen to it you get like coins or whatever and sometimes if i'm doing something else i just let it load before i can play the game and it's so weird. I mean, they all yeah. have their own, like, the Timberwolves have their basketball team, mm-hmm. and they all, like, act and talk like they're on the team. And if you see their YouTube videos, they talk like they're athletes. And it's like, I get it. You're good at the game, but, bro, you need a basketball player? I mean, it's just yeah. it's weird. Right. <laughs> it's I very, like, very meta. I feel like, I feel like uh, Dave Grosby, who's a, a, a Seattle sports um, caster, Mm -hmm. um for espn radio they were asking him one day like what do you like what do you what do you think about the preseason or what did they ask him they said like do you watch the pre or do you like watching the preseason he said it's my job (laughs) (laughs) that's the answer they were like well no do you like watching the preseason he's like it's my job they were like well explain that he's like well i get paid to watch the preseason and if i didn't get paid to watch the preseason i wouldn't watch the preseason Right. And there goes. It's my job. <laughs> like, I wonder what the numbers are for the preseason. I'm sure not know. that great. Um, the Packers Raiders preseason game this week is in Winnipeg, and the estimated attendance is going to be twenty thousand. Ooh. Like, yeah. Like, why are they like, even like, doing like, that? Why would they play it in Winnipeg? Canada has its own football league. <sighs> And Canada's they, football league is fun. Yeah, it's because they keep trying to make all of the... So here's the thing. They keep trying to make international football a thing. Right. And they really want to take the Packers on the road, but the Packers have a contract that they won't give up any home games to go travel, and right. every other team that the Packers travel to don't want to give up their home game for the Packers because the Packers pretty much guarantee asses and seats. So uh-huh. like the Packers have yet to do a London game or travel because nobody wants to give up that game where you're going to make a ton of money, even if it's just off of Packers fans coming to your stadium. Right. I'm pretty sure so, there's a, I'm pretty sure there's a, some type of rule about who can be selected for London games. Yeah. Um, and like, it's something about, you know, how you've been performing. Uh, like, if you're a really good team, you can opt out of going just because yeah. who the fuck wants to play in London? Because I don't think there's ever been a good game played in London, which is no. sad. Like, because the London fans are like really great fans. And like, I think that yeah. London deserves a football team. But it's just like, whenever there's a game there, every single player on the field had to travel to London and had yeah. to sit through whatever the time changes, like five to seven hours. And it's like, yeah, yeah it's going to suck. Everybody's going to suck. And they never get good games. And it's always raining, yeah. which never helps. Like I remember one year, I don't remember who was the other team, but I remember the Titans were playing in fucking London and yeah. it was raining and Marcus Mariota looked like shit. And the game was like something like, nine to 16 or something like that. It was just an awful yeah. piece of shit football game. I just, 
I have the just, have a preseason went, game like like just in a smaller market. Like if you want to do something yeah. fun, like you know, find a field like in some not so well served football community. You know, like uh, the MLB in 2020 is having the White Sox play the Yankees like in the Field of Dreams, like in Iowa. Yeah, and like that's something fun to do. Like think about that. Like why don't you find like a college football stadium in like, I don't know, like use the university of Wyoming's college football stadium, uh, and play a game in Wyoming. Like that'd be dope. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. Cause so many people would just go there just for the experience. Cause it's never happened. Yeah. Because they, like, it's, never. they live like Wyoming has to be one of the farthest places away from like an NFL team. Just cause like, I guess the Broncos are probably the closest, but you're still driving like 10 to 12 hours to get to a football game in any direction. So it's like, that sucks. But if you put a game in Laramie, then like, I mean, the whole state's going to want to go to that. Thank you. Hey. I got the um, ratings for the preseason games this year. And also, they, uh, real quickly, oh. while we're on it, apparently the NFL has set a goal of Although there's no timetable, they've set a goal of establishing a franchise in London around 2021. Um, like a new team? No, it's more than likely. They're, they're it's going to be the Jaguars. It, it's the, basically the Jaguars. <laughs> yeah. Been, who's talked about, but basically, it's, I don't know. I, here's my thing about London. I, I think it's going to be nearly impossible um, to do that. I, I, just, I just don't see how you could do that. And every team that has to travel to London is just going to get shit on because of that time change. Like, it's just, that is such a hard game to do. I don't know. I feel like, I think um, it's a- like when colleges are in, uh, some, like the Oregon-Alabama final. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, Oregon got there because, I mean, they played no one, they had a good record, and they're here, and then they get stomped. So then... Say if the Jaguars are in London, and nine times out of ten people that travel to London, like you said, time difference, they're just playing not their best. Not only is it not good football to watch, and it kind of just sucks for the London fan base like we already discussed, but it's also they're just going to look so much better than they are, and then when they're in the playoffs or in the Super Bowl, they're going to get their yeah. asses beat. Well, yeah, and, but you also I, have I, to think about it the other way, where the Jaguars are going to win eight home games, and they're going to lose eight road games, and they're going to go eight yeah. and eight every season. <laughs> I just, oh yeah, yeah. I do, I do, I do agree with you, Jake. I think London, of all the locations, definitely deserves a team. But there's just a part of me that's like, why don't they just do a London expansion? Do four London teams, have it be its own, um, have it be its own conference, um, and then just add, like, add to it. Like, I don't know. That's I just I really really struggle because then what is it going to be? Are they going to be a part of like the AFC East? I guess. Well, not the Jaguars are part of the AFC South. Yeah. So Why don't they just like... have their own Madden Pro team <laughs> and play that on a jumbotron? Yeah. Also, you know, I, it's the same thing. My also, I pawn. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jake. No, I I was just thinking. I'm like, you know, it's it's great that they want to do it in London, and I'm sure, but I'm sure they'll figure it out. Like, I think <clears throat> probably <clears throat> the best, like, like the fairest thing to do is that like. At the beginning of the season, uh, nobody's good anyways. Uh, so, you know, for the first three weeks before they start doing bye weeks, it's just like straight up like home, road, whatever happens, happens. Um, oh, wait a minute. I, I actually remember hearing something about this now. Um, I, I, I was think I think what they were planning on doing was that they were going to play the Jaguars were going to have like a going to keep their headquarters in Jacksonville and they were going to play like their eight road games first or last or whatever it happened to be. And then they were just the team was going to stay in Jacksonville at their training center um, and do all of their practices there and then play all their road games first and then play all of their home games um, in the last half of the season. And I think what you can do to make it fair for the traveling team is just they get their bye week before they have to travel. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, that'd be actually that would be really interesting. I mean, it's it's Although rough. You really do the last. Yeah, half, they could schedule, like, but it could work. It's rough as hell to have to play season. eight road games in a row. Yeah. 
but, but then you get eight home games. I mean, you'd almost have to do it in the middle um, because otherwise, like, you're going to have teams taking a bye at, like, week 15, week 16. But I, I oh, yeah, the en- well, the, understand where you're coming from. I'm pretty sure yeah. the end, en- I, I don't know when bye weeks stop. When do bye weeks stop? Like, week uh, they usually, 12? I think the latest one is usually, like, week 12, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so, you'd have uh, because they start in week four, right? So yeah, they do, start in week four and like go through week twelve. Yeah, I think do is what they are. yeah. So they play all of their home games four to twelve. Yeah. yeah. So they're on the road for four yeah. games, and then they're on the road for their last four games. Oh man, that would suck to always have to do your last four games on the road. Yeah. But you also get a chunk in the middle of your season that's fucking eight home games in a row. Yeah, it's true. You're right. You're right. Oh, also. Interesting stat. Upon completion of the 2019 NFL season, only, only the Green Bay Packers will not have played an international game series. Hmm. Oh, uh, so, where did, did the Patriots? Pl- oh, yeah, the Patriots played in Mexico. Yep, the Patriots played in Mexico in 2017. So That was a game where people were shining laser lights in Tom Brady's eyes. Really? Uh, I, yeah, oh, yeah, but that, that happened to Brock Osweiler, too, when he was on the Texans. I think Mexico City fans just like really love the Raiders and they're like, eh, fuck everybody else. Yeah. Makes sense. See, to me, that's the hard part is I feel like other North American markets would make more sense for an NFL team just based off of logistics first. But again, right. I also know that like London loves American football. Like, right. I remember when I went to London and this was even like, oh shit. Um, this was like, I don't know, 15 years ago I went to London. Oh, I was waiting for the was waiting for the sound drop. Oh shit! Uh-huh. <laughs> I was just uh-huh. engrossed in your story. I was so ready for. <laughs> I I would back in my day. <laughs> there we go. Uh, when I was in London fifteen years ago, there were people out playing um, playing American football, like just in a park. And like half of them were wearing Packers jerseys. And then there was also an assortment of other jerseys that people were wearing. Uh, I mean, that was 15 years ago. And there were people just out playing American football randomly in a park. So. That's pretty cool. It's, it's kind yeah. Of cool. yeah, I think I think the rest of the world, I think at least Europe is starting to like, un, like get it. Like, yeah, I don't remember when we're having a game in Germany, but I know the NFL wants to have a game in Germany. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. I don't remember if it was next season that they were trying to do it or 2021, something like that. I don't know. See, see to me, like I said, it, if I were the NFL, I would put in like a 10-year plan in place right now that like within the next 10 years, we're going to have four European teams that will have its own like European conference. Yeah. Um, I just worry that there's just not enough talent like – to go into four new expansion teams. I mean, it's difficult for 32 teams to field like yeah. a talented roster. I mean, when you look at teams like the Dolphins and the Cardinals, you're like, well, they've got fucking nothing. So, like, yeah. you know, what can the NFL field? Like 30 ish teams. So it's like, yeah, yeah if all the right. if all of a sudden we start talking about there being 36, um. And then all of a sudden you have to, if you add like four new teams and you want to add a whole new division, it's like, okay, well, how do conferences work now? Yeah, I I almost feel like at that point you would almost have to figure out like, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. No, it'd be crazy. (laughs) I mean, would we go back to there being five teams in a division? That was that was what I was about to say, but I don't even know. You know what? At thirty-six, that would be um, basically seven. You know, seven conferences, and then one random team by itself. Yeah, oh, man, I, I would love I that. Know. That would be like the high school that doesn't have like a <laughs> conference to play in, so they just like run around and build their own schedule and just have to get their ass kicked by all the good <laughs> schools that are like, "We'll take they, an easy win." Oh man, they should do that. But every year, it's the team with the worst schedule gets kicked out of gets kicked out to its own, and then like 
the other team gets replaced in there. So you could have years where like a conference or a division never looks the same as it did the year before. Like, and it's just this constant rotation of different teams into different conference or different divisions. I'm all about developing some level of relegation. I think that that's the only thing that uh, soccer and like the or the English like Premier League has yeah. really like figured out that is just incredible. The idea of relegation. Yeah. I would love to have one team be punished for being the worst team in the NFL. Go, I, I, pack, go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack was not here for uh, Say bye. for for your friend. Yeah, so. my friend. Try and see you before you leave. I, you will. My friend Aaron was um, hanging out, and he's also a Packers fan. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh my goodness! So yeah, I, I, like I said, I I, uh, I think I think relegation would be great. I also do think though that um, actually I think it would be interesting if football started moving more towards like a, almost like the way college is. So you almost have just larger conferences um, that teams are trying to just kind of duke it out in instead, mm-hmm. um, or larger divisions. Um, so almost just having like a Western division, a Midwestern division, yeah, an Eastern advice. division, and like they just, the teams are split up amongst the 32 teams or 36 teams into those three. So you have 12 teams per <laughs> conference, and then you could even have, you know, two con- two divisions inside of each conference that has six teams in it. Yeah, the, pro- the problem with that is that that would almost require a longer season. Because yeah. if you put, so I was thinking, I was like 36. Okay, so you put, um, yeah, f- wait a minute. How many fucking, what does that divide into? Four and basically six? You'd, yeah, you'd have, you'd have six teams in four, yeah. six teams in four in divisions. Six, in six divisions. Oh, yeah. Six teams in six, six divisions. And then each of them would have to play every other team in their division twice. So that's 10 games already done. And then yeah. they, how many games? Uh, what they'd play oh, three yeah. other Actually, games in conference be, and three be, games out of conference. Yeah, if you did that, you could do, you could do one of two things. You could do those ten games, and then you play against the six teams from another conference, and there's your sixteen games. Or you play the five, you know, like what they do right now. You play the five leaders of each conference. So if you're number one in your conference this year, then next year you play all um, the number ones. All the number ones. And then to really go international, um, one game in the middle of your season. You have to to play play soccer against the uh, (laughs) high school (laughs) soccer team from Germany. (laughs) You have to play a CFL team using (laughs) CFL rules. I still, you know, if it honestly, I think if you put any NFL team against a Canadian football team and gave them like a month to prepare for the rules of the game, I think every NFL team would win. Oh, one hundred percent, every time, every time. So, <laughs> I no, I I really think that we should just adopt the CFL into the league. And be like, okay, you're our relegation league. The winner, <laughs> the winner of the Grey Cup gets to play in the NFL, and the lo- and the worst record in the NFL has to play in the CFL next year. That would be awesome. Actually. So the Arizona Cardinals practice. this year, or the Dolphins, are going to be playing in the they- CFL next year. And then we get like the BC Lions. Yeah, we get the that. Montreal Alouettes or something like that. <laughs> That would be um, that would be tremendous. They get to draft. They get to do everything that yeah. we get to do. Um, they get to be a part of the NFL. But at the end of each season, the losing team, the worst team in the NFL, has to go play in the CFL, and the winner of the Grey Cup gets to come and play in the in the NFL. Yeah, that would be that would um, probably actually help the CFL be competitive if we just like. Okay, so the entire NFL goes the normal same way, like the 32 teams in their ranking, 
And then yep. at the end of each round, you tack on the Canadian Football League teams in order of how they did. And so you're just, yeah. I think there's only like 12 or 10 uh, Canadian Football League teams. So you're really not, so. so you're really not hurting um, teams too much. And you're actually making the CFL a much better product and like making it competitive. But yeah, so yeah. then you Feeling just the switch. For people who might not have like, I don't know, like uh, some athletes that may have gotten the ice by the NFL or they can't come back in. Maybe mm-hmm. could go to the CFL, try yeah. super hard. Make the ra- make the draft 12 rounds now. Yeah. yeah. There's nine. There's nine teams in the CFL. So that's not even that bad. So, yeah, just fucking plug them in. Uh, add two or three rounds to the draft and make it a relegation league. And fucking yeah. then the Mi- it's going to be hilarious when the Miami Dolphins are a Canadian Football League team. <laughs> who who was the worst team in the NFL last year? The Cardinals. It was the Cardinals. So we would be getting this year the Calgary Stampeders. Beautiful. <laughs> and they'd be getting Bring them in. the Arizona Cardinals. Yes. Well, the Arizona Cardinals would definitely fucking destroy every other Canadian Football League team, and oh, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure in the current state of things, like the first year we do it, it's going to be ridiculous because the Calgary, whatever they're called, would Stamp not, years. they wouldn't win a game. Like they absolutely yeah. just wouldn't yeah. win a game. It would also and, be and- so hard for those two teams because the C- Canada team would have to learn, would have to like change their entire offense to a the new NFL rules, you'd have to yeah. just make a, a set of rules, so, uh, like a, a oh, like a standardized set of rules. So what we're taking from the from the CFL is the rouge. We're taking one point touchbacks, uh, yeah. and then they can't have running starts anymore. All right, guys, hold on. In 2017, we would have been getting rid of the uh, the Browns and would have been bringing in the Toronto Argonauts. Oh, uh, hell yeah. In That's a great name. in 2016, well, I guess in 2016 we would have gotten rid of the Browns and brought in the Otto Red Blacks. Um, <laughs> what is that? Dude, the Edmonton Eskimos. I love Ooh. these names. <laughs> the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Come on. What wasn't the Saskatchewan Rough Riders the team that we had like anointed as our team? I think so. Wait, so the Red Blacks, they played a ga- game against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and they only scored one point? Yeah. That's very bad. You guys, you guys, the Grey Cup has been around since 1909. Yeah, it's older than, it predates the Super Bowl by a lot. It, it, was, it was won by the University of Toronto Varsity Blues against the Toronto Parkdale Canoe Club. Yeah. I remember I remember hearing a story about that. Like the first Grey Cup could have been won by a fucking canoe team. <laughs> Grey Cup looks really cool though. Yeah. That's like, like I mean, that's honestly cup. like, you know, just when you're driving down the highway and you see one of those adopt a highway signs and it's just like sponsored by the, you know, Orange <laughs> City Fire Department. It's like if that was like but instead they won the Grey Cup. <laughs> <laughs> They're you not know, picking up trash on a highway. They won. The, they won a, a national you know championship. What, you know what's amazing? Most of these team names have been around like for pretty close to the beginning. Like yeah, the the, Hamilton, o- the only team the in the Ham- NFL that still has their original name is the Bears. Uh, the Green Bay Packers too. Well, I guess the Bears were uh, the only original NFL team. Or were the Packers an original NFL team? I don't think the so. Packers, the Packers and the Bears were original NFL teams. Because the Packers is celebrating its 100th year this year. Maybe I was wrong. So the Bears and the Packers, are that's why they're the oldest rivalry in NFL history. is because I think they both came into the league or they were both original teams. The Packers were playing football as the Acme Packers before the NFL was created. Um, but only by like one year. And then they came in with the NFL. More like the butt packers. <laughs> Horrible. Um, oh man, uh, you know the team from the AFL or the CFL that I wish would have kept its name um, or would have stuck around. Um, 
Where did it go? Oh no, I lost. Oh, uh, no, I lost it. All right, whatever. Um, but most of these teams from the AF or the CFL like have been around since the beginning. Like some of their names have changed, but mm -hmm. they've pretty much like the Argonauts, the Alouettes. Like this is crazy. I love this. Are we going to become a Canadian Football League podcast? <laughs> no, I'm just looking at the Canadian Football League and enjoying it. So, um, hey. I'm up for whatever. Jack. Jack. I think he left. He, I think he got oh, a phone what? call. Oh, man. I wanted to find out what's going on with, with his boy Zeke and Jerry Jones. They're, like, feuding over there. Uh, fucking... I don't agree with this particular holdout. I'm never okay. in favor of the owners. I pretty much across the board hate the owners uh, and will support the players and what they want to do. But like some of the holdouts and like this is one of like, and I supported Le'Veon Bell and his decision, but yeah. this feels different than what he was wanting to do he just didn't want to play under the franchise tag for a team that wanted to like use and abuse him and then like send him off into free agency yeah. um this is like a team that clearly wants him to play for them for the rest of his career and has offered to make him the second highest paid player at his position and he's yeah. still holding out because he thinks that he should be you know the first overall and it's like i respect that you probably like if i was building an nfl team i would rather take zeke than todd Gurley. um mm -hmm. so like i get him wanting to be the top paid player but it's just like when it comes down to it there are so many other positions on that team that need to get filled and it's just like being the second highest paid player like i think I, I don't know what's wrong with his agent where it's just like, okay, like if you want to make him, because I don't know how old he is. I think he's probably like 25, 26. He's, he's 24. 24. And he's under contract through 2020, his current it, contract. It's just like, give him a three-year deal, make him the second yeah. highest paid player, and then we can come back to this in three years. It's just like... Yeah. I, I, think, I think the thing that bothers me about some of these players, especially that are coming up through the NFL now, is that you just like they get to the contract year and they're just like, instead of going out and playing and proving why I should be given a deal they're like in this case, it's like, what are you, what are you holding out for? You're still under contract. Like you're still under contract. Maybe you're not making as much as you'd like, but um, like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get to go to my boss and be like, I don't get, I'm not making as much as I like. So I'm going to hold out until you decide to pay me. Right. I just, like, I, I, I mean, I, I recognize that the NFL works differently than the standard, you know, workplace uh, relationship. Of course. And like you understand that too. Um, yes. But but like that is like one thing that pisses me off more than anything is when people like just think about it the way that they think about their jobs. And I'm like, you're not a professional athlete. Like your job is different well, than than their job. Like the like Absolutely. you don't risk literally like life-threatening injuries day in and day out at your job so it's like i totally understand them wanting to get more money absolutely but i just think that this is a stupid way for zeke in particular to go about it the only person who i think has less yes. leverage in a situation is melvin gordon uh because yes. like the cowboys really need zeke uh to be a good football team uh, yes. the fucking Chargers don't like like they don't no. need Melvin Gordon like they have two no. great backups um, yes. behind him and yes. and so it's just like he I don't know what what the hell he thinks he's gonna have is, is gonna happen um, yeah. <clears throat> he's definitely well, not going to become the highest paid running back in the league so it's just like I think that he pro like maybe he just doesn't want to play in San Francisco or in uh, uh, LA anymore and maybe yeah. but like and maybe Zeke doesn't want to play for the Cowboys I don't understand how he could not want to play in the Cowboys how is the greatest team in America's team bro I think why wouldn't you want to play for him I think that and and back to your point Jake I you're right like I I I think there's a lot of things that the NFL does that screws over players so I'm definitely not going to sit here and say that like we have the same job and all that kind of stuff. I, I guess, I guess I I see so many more players, more and more and more and more players 
that are doing this holdout stuff that are just right. like, I'm going to hold out. And it's like, you know what? Like, like, like you said, I understand if you don't want to get jerked around by the franchise tag and this team is just going to screw you over, use you until they are done and then get rid of you. But I also think the franchise tag in its current form is garbage as well. Yeah. But like, but like to me, like it is one of those things where it's like, look at the collective bargaining agreement and, and the, uh, is coming up in what? 2020, I think another yeah. year. Like that is your chance <laughs> to change some of these things. Mm-hmm. But sitting here and just holding out and more and more players deciding that the way to get paid is holding out. Um, I, I also don't agree with that. And I'm getting tired of all of these players handicapping their teams by wanting to just get tons and tons of money. Like, mm-hmm. like I don't care what people say about Tom Brady. At the end of the day, the guy took a smaller paycheck <laughs> in order to be able to have a better team. Right. Uh, and, like, I, I totally understand. You know, and, like, the God, the, the people on sports talk radio and the TV shows, they're just so fucking annoying about shit like this. Where it's just, like, they always constantly bring up how, like, oh, he's married to a, you know, supermodel who makes, like, five times as much a year as he does. So it's, like, he doesn't yeah, need to he doesn't need to <laughs> take a full deal contract. It's, like, literally any quarterback in the entire NFL, like, even if you're taking a team-friendly deal, Tom Brady still gets paid, like, $26 million a year. Like, yes, he course. does, he, like, every quarterback could be doing this, and they just choose not to. And, like, I don't help, like... I don't, I'm not for or against taking team friendly deals. And I don't expect, especially like a running back, I don't expect to want to. So, like, I totally understand why Zeke wants to be the highest paid player. Um, But it's just like your options are either like you are, you can be the second highest paid running back on a team that loves you. And like, yeah, the Cowboys, a team historically known for holding on to veteran players past when they should. Um, Marion Barber. <laughs> I mean, now that now that Jerry's kind of stepped back and his son has taken over more of those roles, like less of that is happening. But yeah. like, it's still a team that's going to take care of you. Um, or you can become the highest paid player at your position, free agency. But it's like in Zeke's case, yeah, he's still under contract. Like if he holds out this year, it voids that year of his contract and it moves to the next year. Like him holding out this year does not get him to free agency any faster or with less like wear and tear on his body. It's just, he's just losing money. So it's just dumb. So it's just like, he should just take, he should just want to sit down and be like, I want a two year contract and I want to hit free agency. If you guys want to make me, if your guys are only going to pay me this, this much money, I want a two-year contract. Um, or otherwise, it, you can make me the highest paid player and I'll sign like a five-year contract. Yeah. But I think, I think that's the other thing is that, you know, when they sit down and they start interviewing these players, you know, you just hear like, well, it's about respect. It's about respect. I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I don't understand what's disrespectful about a team wanting to pay you a shit ton of money even though it's the second highest paid player. Right. Because here's the thing. They're going to sign Zeke. He's going to be the highest paid player for like a month. And mm-hmm. then he's going to be the second highest paid player. Like, right. like Aaron Rodgers got signed to the highest contract. And literally within two or three months, he was like the third or fourth highest paid player in the NFL. Right. Like, so it's, it's, you know, I look at it and I go, I just, I think that it's, it's so stupid when you hear players, not not teams, not agents, not other players, when you hear the player themselves saying, well, it's about respect. I need this money because it's about respect. It's well, not. It's about money. It's not. It's yeah. about money. Like, the team's respecting you by paying you more um, and giving it to you in, you know, the second or the third year of your current deal, your rookie deal, by the way. Mm-hmm. And no offense to Zeke, but... Um, you know, he hasn't exactly carried them to a Super Bowl. Right. Um, he's carried them really far, but like, I, I just, you know, you're a good player. But you're making millions out. at the bottom line. It's millions. You're set for life. Your kids are set for life if you have them. Like, it's just shut the fuck up. 
you know? Yeah, if I don't know. Person- I get annoyed by that, like, style of, like, talk show thing. Like, I, I, I definitely feel that, like, as just a person, you know, who, you know, works a normal job and watches the yeah. NFL, where I'm just, where it's just like, you're getting pissed off about $13 million a year? How about you shut the fuck up? But I just feel like it's such a tired and fucking drawn out thing when, like, yeah. the fucking, you know, millionaire, like, TV talk show hosts, like sports show hosts, are yeah. fucking making that point. And I'm like, you yeah. literally make millions of dollars a year to fucking argue about sports on television. You can yeah. shut the fuck up too. Yeah. Um, I I guess I guess for me, like, and, and like, I know what people think about him. I don't really give a shit. But like, um, a decade ago, now almost a decade ago, Aaron Rodgers had won a Super Bowl and was the MVP of the league. The very next year, making he won a Super Bowl, making like five million a year, became MVP of the year league, making seven million a year. And a bunch of people were trying to get him to be like, oh, yeah, respect and this and that. And like some people asked him, well, what, you know, what kind of money do you think you should make? When do you think you should get a contract and blah, blah, blah. Aaron Rodgers literally looked at the guy and said, I'm under contract now. I'm going to go out there and play the best football I can under the contract that I signed. And if the Green Bay Packers want to sign me to a bigger contract, when they're ready to do that, my agent will sit down and will sign a bigger contract. But for now, I'm going to play football under the contract that I originally signed. I think it's really easy for a quarterback to say that because you know when you're a good quarterback, you know your career is going to be like 20 years long. Uh, if, you, if you're a good running back, like I feel like the the way that rookie contact contracts work should definitely differ based on position, because oh, yeah. if you're a good running back, you're not going to be a good running back by the time you get to like twenty nine thirty. Like your career yeah. at most is like 10 years. So it's like, you know, rookie contracts for a running back being five years is fucking ridiculous. You're going to be on a rookie salary for half your career. No, like but, but rookie only, running backs. It is, it is only the first round. Right. But I mean, still, even even when you're getting into the later rounds, you're still talking about three years. So it's just like but like that's what it should be like a rookie contract for a running back should be three years with a fourth year option. Like five years is too fucking long for a running back to not be able to hit free free agency. Or it needs to be five years with like an exponential growth in the third and fourth year. But I do I will say that in that regard, that is one area where I do think that. If there is an exponential growth, like, I do feel that teams should have the ability to opt out of, like, the fifth year. Like, if it's going to go, like, three million, yeah. five well, million, Yeah, well, the fifth year is million, an option. Million. Huh? The fifth year is an option. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, like, I agree. Like, it should be, like, the first year is three million, second year is, like, five million, fourth year is, like, seven million, sixth year is ten million. Like, for a running, or fourth mm-hmm. year is, like, ten million, for a running back or something. Um, it just like exponentially goes up. And then if you're not performing, then a team can just drop you. And if you are performing and a team just feels like being a dick and dropping you, then another team can just pick you up and pay you the money that you deserve. Like, right. I just, no, I, yeah, yeah, I just like, I think that that's going to like, with the new CBA, it's going to be weird. Cause like, that's definitely something that I think the players will support. Yeah. Um, is like redo- restructuring rookie contracts, even though the the players union is the reason why we have these um, contracts, these rookie pay scales in the first place is because yeah. like they didn't want um, a bunch of rookies like coming in and ruining the market for like their positions as veterans. Um, so it's like or ruining their ability to get jobs. Like they wanted rookies to be on their ma- on their drafted team for longer so that veteran free agents still can get jobs. Um, but it's like, I think that this is just better for everybody. I think that if you can hit free agency earlier, you can make more money earlier and the market will like adequately reflect the value yeah. of things. Cause like, as it's going right now, it's just like, you know, the, the running back market just isn't going to, be there for people for this like increase while and you know like the quarterback market needs to like somebody like teams need to figure out how to like reset the quarterback market because every time a new quarterback gets a contract they can't keep becoming the highest paid player in the league like no 
like Dak Prescott is an okay to good quarterback. Like he does not deserve to be the highest paid player in the league, but because like somebody like Jimmy Garoppolo became the highest paid player in the league and like yeah. Kirk Cousins became the highest played paid player in the league, everybody thinks that they need to be. But it's like, but it's like Dak Prescott, yeah. you don't deserve to be the highest paid player in the league cuz you're not even like the you're not even like top 10 best quarterbacks. You're like maybe yeah. top half best quarterbacks in the league. But it's like, you're not that good. Like, you shouldn't want to be paid like the best player in the league. But that's going to be, that's going to be up to the, and this is where, like, I do think, like, the owners and whatnot need to step in because that's going to really be up to the owners and other people saying, no, we're not going to pay you that. Right. And that means that you're not going to be our quarterback. Then go go find another team that's going to pay you $40 million a year. Dak Prescott or, you know, whoever is on the list next to become the highest paid quarterback of all time. Well, when everybody fucking freaked out about, you know, uh, Dak Prescott asking for 40 million a year, I was just like losing my mind because I'm like, do you guys not know how to negotiate things? Have you not watched Pawn Stars? You need to fucking start high and work your way down. Like Dak wants to be the highest paid player at his position. Um, which is still ridiculous to me, but it's like, he knows that the Cowboys probably were offering something like 27 million or something like that. And so he can't, he comes in with fucking 40. He's like, I want to be paid $40 million a year. And they're like, well, that's fucking ridiculous. Let's meet, let's meet somewhere closer to like 32. And then he gets what he actually wants and he's the highest paid player. So it's like, that's probably more what he's going for. Well, I don't know. What is, uh, who's the highest paid player in the league right now? What does Aaron Rodgers get paid? Ridiculous. Something like he gets paid like thirty three, right? I don't know. Uh, yeah, he gets paid like thirty three, which when he signed his deal was the highest, um, right? Uh, but yeah, it says Jimmy Garoppolo right now is uh, is the highest paid quarterback. I thought he only made like twenty eight. Um, hold on, let me see here. Oh, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is the highest paid player because he just redid his contract. Yes, I think you're right. I have my like, big autistic spreadsheet of football names in front of me. I was just going through all the quarterbacks. I'm just trying to... Have you guys seen this thing since I color-coded it? It's awful. I really wish no. I wouldn't have done this. Actually, <laughs> it says that Russell... Well, I guess this is... Oh, Russell yeah. Mark. Russell Ru- Wilson was the highest paid... I then, forgot that Russell Wilson redid his contract. It went Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger, then Aaron Rodgers, and then Carson Wentz. Oh, I guess Carson Wentz didn't take as a, like the most money. Maybe it's because Carson Wentz realizes that uh, he's also not the best quarterback in the league. Yeah, yeah, that that's the list um, for that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I'm all about go and get your money, especially if you're somebody like Dak Prescott, who it's like, fucking, you know, your career could fall apart at any time because you're not actually that good at playing the position. Um, yeah. So it's like, you know, he should. Just, I mean, like, if it, if I was him, it would just be like, I just want as much guaranteed as possible. Like, I don't really like make me like pay me 27 or something like that. But if you guarantee the whole fucking contract, I don't really give a shit. Because no matter what, I'm going to get $100 million, even if I'm not that good. Which yeah, could happen when this, offensive, yeah, when this offensive line finally falls apart. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The, the holdouts, like, I, I, I understand them. I empathize with the players. I know that they just want to be compensated fairly for their efforts and like putting their bodies on the line. And I also like appreciate people trying to drive the markets up so that, you know, people, you know, after them also get paid more. Um, but when it co- like, I don't know, Zeke's an asshole and I just like, don't root for him. Um, so that's kind of hard. But when it comes to like Melvin Gordon, like I wish that like he had some type of like bargaining um, with his team to like make more money uh because like he deserves it he's a good running back and i think that all running backs deserve to be paid more because i think that they have like the most like damaging job as far as their body goes outside of like offensive and defensive lines yeah um and their career is so much shorter than both of those positions so it's just like i think that they should get paid more but you know 
it's just kind of how the business works that they don't. But like, yeah, Melvin Gordon's holdout is stupid. He literally has nothing, no bargaining. Because I honestly think he might hold out this whole year and the Chargers are still going to be basically as good as if they didn't have him. Because like, yeah. oh, I think their backups are good enough to just fucking cover yeah. for him. Well, I think there's a reason why the Chargers were completely fine with, uh, with, uh, with trying to retcon him. Trying mm-hmm. to just trade him away. Yeah. You know, I just think that they don't care. They don't need him. Yeah, I think it's weird, like, where, you know, like, running backs' trade values are so strange. Especially, like, you know, when Duke Johnson gets traded to the Texans for fucking, like, a third, like, a fourth round pick that turns into a third if he plays, like, more than 10 games. So it's pretty much a third. Yeah. Um, that well, was like really high compensation for him. That was that was that was a lot for Duke Johnson. I mean, Duke Johnson's a good player, but it's just like I can't imagine. Like, I just can't imagine anybody giving up a first round pick for a running back. Like, I just don't think it's going to happen. Well, but I mean, right? I mean, I I feel like we have to remember that when it comes to we this is the quarterbacks league. Mm-hmm. So so much so many teams when it comes to offensive lines. They really train their offensive linemen to protect a quarterback. Yeah. And not very many teams are good at, like, solidly good at the running game anymore because Mm -hmm. it requires your offensive linemen to learn and work how to run, how to be a running quarterback. Right. A running offensive lineman. So, you know, um, I personally think the last great team that was just, could just pound the ball down your throat was the uh, was the Seattle Seahawks with Marshawn Lynch. Mm-hmm. But they were an entirely like offensive line based on a run-first team with a quarterback that had legs and could throw outside of the pocket when he needed to. Right. So, you know, aside from that, running backs really don't have a ton of value, I think, in the league because nobody puts emphasis on the run game quite like they used to anymore right um, the only the only thing that makes a player like todd Gurley, right who was great at catching the ball great at running the ball and pretty much great at anything he could do in mm-hmm. you know up until this last year with injuries right i think the the only team that makes sense and the only team that you really hear anybody connected to um with any of these holdout running backs is the Redskins. Cause the Redskins running back room looks awful. Cause it's fucking Adrian yeah. Peterson and Darius guys. Um, and then it's like the chargers have a real shit offensive line and the Redskins currently have a probably like top three, uh, left tackle who is refusing to play for them. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, trade, like, a straight-up trade of Trent Williams for um, uh, Melvin Gordon makes sense to me. But, like, yeah. the Redskins also have to want to pay him, like, what he wants to be paid, which is probably, like, near the top, probably, like, $13, $14 million a year. And yeah. uh, when you're on a team that is fucking garbage, like the Redskins, uh, you know, do they want to devote that much of their salary uh, cap to a running back, especially when, well, actually they don't even have a quarterback taking up that much space on their roster right now. So maybe they could do it. I don't know. I just kind of hope that, you know, Melvin Gordon is happy. Cause I think that he's a great player and I want him to play. Yeah. Um, and I want Trent Williams to literally be anywhere that isn't the Redskins. Cause the Redskins can eat a dick. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. Can you just imagine being an NFL player um, who's given you know your health and you know a decade to a football organization that like lies to you and tells you to play through having a brain tumor and lies to you about you having a brain tumor? Just like what a piece of shit! Like I, I just the Redskins. Can we just send the Redskins into the into the ocean? Just the whole organization. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'd be fine with that actually. Um, just take Dan Schneider, Snyder, whatever his name is, and just like launch him to the moon. Fuck that dude. Fuck this team. Yeah. yeah. 
Like I think I think that uh, we should just have a vote. Like when we make a a London expansion team, it should just be like the NFL owners vote unanimously to strip, uh, like you know, ownership of the Washington Redskins away from fucking Dan Snyder, and then they just <laughs> auction it off to the highest London bidder. Although it would be funny to have like the London Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> oh my like, god <laughs> hopefully they change the name it'd be pretty funny if they didn't but <laughs> or they changed it to something equally racist in uh, London <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah the Washington N-words that's that's what's coming oh. next <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the London West Indian Company oh, like, oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh please <laughs> What's like a racist term for Irish people? Let's just call it that. Like a, a yeah, the London mix. <laughs> London mix. It's horrible. Yeah, that horrible. that would be the equivalent. And then let's just find the most like atrocious human being in London, Boris Johnson. Let's have Boris Johnson be the owner, be the owner of the London mix. <laughs> Oh, man, that would be terrible. All right, now I'm looking up. All right, this is delved into places that we shouldn't go. I was looking up racist terms in <laughs> to try and come up with something. And then I was like, maybe maybe we should be maybe done podcasting not. tonight. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's a good place to end it when we're Googling racist terms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Here's the sign. All right. Well, it's been fun. Yeah, that yes, was sir. good. All right, um... Oh, Danny boy. Thank you all for listening. The pipes, the pipes. Tune in. Oh, Damn it. Oh, <laughs> what? What did you do? Fuck, I hit my microphone. Uh. <laughs> eh, fuck it, you guys, you guys get the idea. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>